Hello and welcome back to AC's 8-Bit Zone. If you've been following along on the channel, you've seen this color computer one a couple of times recently. That's because it's in the lab for a video output update. And while I'm at it, I'm also upgrading the ROM and upgrading from 16K of RAM to 64K. I think this is pretty much everything that I'm going to need for this particular version of the Coco One. You can get a copy of the PDF of this issue in the Color Computer Archive. When it comes to the Color Computer One, the first revision of it was the D board. D is in Delta. Then came the E board, and then something called the NC board. Some know the NC board as the F board or the 285. It should be very easy to upgrade to 64K of RAM. It's pretty much clip out these eight capacitors. Uh, then there are a couple of jumpers next to U21, one jumper, a third jumper above U28, and then a jumper next to U17. So four total jumpers, and then just replace the eight RAMs with 4164s. Like I mentioned, you've seen it a couple times lately. Uh, we updated the, the ROM first and then came around with a uh, Coco DV video upgrade board. Okay, here are the eight RAM chips. We'll just lower the keyboard out of the way. There we go. These are probably just 0.1 microfarad caps that are easily replaced if we wanted to. The leads are probably bent underneath. And they're holding on really well. Just going to pull the other end and get rid of the whole thing. To me, this looks a little bit neater. With all eight capacitors removed, let's move the jumpers. So here are the first two. We're moving them over to 64K. There's one. There's two. Over here above U28 is the third one. There's a fourth one over here that just needs a jumper header added. Okay, that's all the jumpers. And now let's replace the RAMs themselves. ICs that aren't installed usually have the, uh, or at least dips that are not installed, usually have the leads splayed out, outward slightly. And it's usually too wide to, to hit the socket. Okay, here we go with the second one. I love how they went to such great lengths to line all the ICs up in the same direction on boards back at the time. That doesn't happen so much anymore with modern PCB layouts. These days, designers turn the chips in the optimal direction for usually for signal concerns to get the uh, to optimize the routing escapes. But back then, there must have been some guideline that all ICs shall orient in the in a common direction. Okay, I think I did everything. So. Clip the caps, four jumpers, change the chips. That should be it. Let's take it over to the, uh, the other bench and fire it up. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. All right, didn't crash and burn. So 
All right, one RAM test that uh, that I've used before, which is the Dennis Bisson uh, ROM all ROM tester. So uh, with that one, you just pull your Color Basic ROM out, put his in, um, then connect a serial port to the uh, to the serial output, and look at the, look at the uh, and monitor it over a terminal. That's one way. There's some other ways, but um, just the fact that it boots up and the video is good means that a lot of the RAM is, is good and working. So I'll test that RAM some more, but uh, if you have an F board, it's a, uh, a really easy upgrade to upgrade to 64K. Here are a couple of ways that you can tell and confirm if you have the F board. One good indicator is if you have, if it has this RF hat over the, the area of, of the RAM down here in the bottom right hand corner, the, the earlier, I think the D and the E had the large shield that was an overall shield that, that went out all the way around all the ICs up, uh, up to here. Um, another way is uh, they call this the 285. So I guess that's because the, the PCB number ends in 285. Um, they call this the F board, the 285 board, and the NC board. But uh, that's it for this video, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you next time here at AC's 8-Bit Zone. See you.